Hi everyone and welcome back to episode number 40. Today we had a special request for a topic and so mom's going to tackle um, words and gossip today. So there's a lot in God's word regarding that theme and so she has a lot of material she can share on that. Um, so we'll turn it over to mom. All right. Um... You know, there's a verse that, in scripture that says where there's a multitude of words, there's not a lack of sin. So women tend to be talkers and have a lot of friends and everybody can just uh, wax eloquent and talking about a lot of issues. But we're going to talk about what happens when it starts declining into gossip and how you can um, guard yourself and scripture verses that uh, talk about um, how a virtuous woman talks and somebody that uh, pleases God and so uh, I've written down some thoughts on this and I hope that it will be a help not only just to kind of guard your own words and um, and motives uh, when you're sharing things with other women and also if um, gossip starts to show up in in the group that you're talking in and and uh, things that are not helpful and things that are uh, degrading to either their husband or uh, somebody else, um, how to respond to that. And so we're just going to talk about that. You know, when God repeats something word for word twice in Scripture, we need to take, take it seriously. And um, there is a verse that is in Proverbs and it's um, in Proverbs 18, verse 8, and 26, verse two, 22, and it, it is identical. It says, the words of a whisperer are as dainty morsels, and they go down into the innermost parts. Now, in California, we have, um, and I think it's in Arizona and a few western states, we have a candy store called C's Candies. It's been around for a long time. And boy, um, their specialty is chocolate things, and they know how to make chocolate delicious in so many forms. And you know how when you eat too much candy or chocolate and all that, it goes down and kind of turns into fat. <laughs> it's hard to get rid of. So um, we're gonna talk about that. Dainty morsels in the scripture when it's talking about that, it's actually referring to morsels of slander. They may, you might say it in a way that sounds innocent or whatever, but it's not reflecting well on either your husband or your um, children or uh, some other people that are in the church or in your group of friends. So we're going to talk about that and. You know, it's interesting. God gives a condensed list in in uh, Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 of the things that God hates. And they, they're called an abomination. So it's a big thing. Um, and so it's things like pride and a lying tongue and someone that sheds innocent blood, someone whose feet are always running to uh, mischief and... Uh, someone that has a wicked imagination and a false witness that speaks lies and the seventh is and I'm going to put it in the female form because I'm talking to ladies but she that sows discord among sisters or friends so that's a big deal if it makes it into that list that God calls an abomination so we should make it a big deal about really checking our words and our motives when we're saying talking about people so I'm gonna go to the next page of some notes that I uh, and it, you know there's another verse that talks about a froward man and we're gonna put it into female again because I'm not preaching to men okay a froward woman sows strife and a whisperer separates chief friends and so if this is, you know, a whisper, you think, oh, that's just a mild little thing. But what you're doing is you're kind of sharing with somebody derogatory information. 
You know, the I used to tell my kids to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And so somebody can say one part of a, a, a story that is true, perhaps, but when you leave out the whole truth, um, that's a problem. And also, personal details that reflect badly on some but he, it's not helpful to share. I think about a feather pillow. If it was a windy day and you went up on a hill and you cut open a feather pillar, pillow, those feathers, those down feathers, would end up all over and you could never retrieve all of them. And that picture might help you a little bit if you're tempted to tell something derogatory about a friend. You never know where it's going to be repeated or embellished and 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 you can never retrieve it back and take it back. So words are something that we need to think seriously about before we share information. What is our motive? And is it needful? And do these people, are they part of the problem or solution? So you need to be careful what your motive is for sharing some dainty morsel of slander. Now, uh, the Bible says that someone that dwells with God on his holy hill does not slander with her tongue and does no evil to her neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against her friend. So, you, you know, sometimes somebody will hear um, something negative about somebody and then they'll take up a reproach maybe um, that means they'll take up the kind of the uh, offense um, and you just don't want to do that because if God allows something to come between two friends he will give grace to the person um, that maybe was offended and they'll maybe make up later and do fine but you might not know all about that. So you be careful that what you listen to and how you how it reflects on your attitudes about people, if you've heard it um, whispered in a negative way for you. Now, you know, sometimes you're not sharing gossip and you're just with a group of friends and and if they're unsafe friends or neighbors and it kind of starts going in the way of gossip, uh, you can either excuse yourself and maybe go get a drink of water or you can say something, if it's somebody that you know that they're talking about, you can just say a positive word about them. And that sometimes will uh, soften the other people. And um, so uh, it's not that you're going to uh, put guilt on an unsaved person. They're not they don't know the love of Christ, and um, but it would be a way of being salt and light uh, to those people. But if it's a in your uh, circle of Christian friends, sometimes there's a women's uh, Bible study or a prayer group. And when we were in the mountains, what we did um, uh, with our ladies' meetings is that we... Um, that always began at the beginning with, well, this is not the place to talk about your husbands or share other details of problems that you're having with people because you can come and get counsel for that one-on-one. -on -one. That's the best way to handle that. Sometimes with Christians, that dainty morsels come out as um, prayer requests. They, they want to ask for prayer about something and then they tell juicy details that don't need to be shared and are not helpful for the other people hearing it. So that's important to kind of nip in the bud if you're going to have a prayer group. So um, be careful, you know, just make sure that they know that there is a godly counsel available one-on-one -on -one and, and somebody that can pray with you about something, but that's not for a, a general group to be given details that are not helpful and that they're not part of the solution. And um, so th that's my advice to you there. 
you know, I kind of mentioned it with a prayer request, but sometimes in a group, women will say, I need help with this problem or whatever, and they tend to want to talk about what's going on, that uh, what their husband's doing that they don't like or whatever. So um, if, if they want advice and they're really sincere about that, and if you have offered a... Um, if you're not the one, but you know somebody that would be giving good biblical advice, just say, you know, I um, before you go into any details, I really would like to uh, encourage you to get uh, a wise counseling from, and if you don't feel uh, able to do that because maybe you're not in the same season of life that she's in, um, it would be best just to, just to kind of nip it early and uh, tell her that you'll be praying for her and ask her if she would like you to set up a time with that other biblical counselor or if um, if she would like to um, give you a chance to do some thoughtful um, biblical research on what would be the most help to her. All right, um, now positive verses. Proverbs 31, 10, it says, who can find a virtuous woman? That makes it sound like it's pretty hard to find. And, you know, it uh, probably is sometimes. But she, it says in verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Now, a law, isn't that neat? If we could think um, before we speak and before we say something, and we can think, is this kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? And so that's that's a good thing to keep in your mind, is um, not everything that could be said should be said. Uh, you just want to pass that uh, those three gates. Is it true? Is it honest? Is it necessary? And then um, there's one more thing. Uh, I wanted to bring up here because uh, women can do a lot of damage in a church. Lots of times women can feel like they can analyze things and know just need, what needs to change and then they can uh, share their opinion with people and anybody that will listen. And there have been many churches that have been brought down and, um, and just have a lot of strife in it because the women have an discontented um, and judgmental attitude about what the men leaders are doing. So be especially careful about that. Uh, let your friends know that you will not listen to this under the um, radar sowing of discontentment. Um, it never ends well and it can do much damage to the cause of Christ. So that is, I just want to put that in because I know I've heard of several churches that have um, struggled because of some women that were busybodies and wanted to um, figure out how things should be done differently. So be careful. Don't give an ear to that. You know, what we listen to, and we brought it up at the beginning about how dainty morsels go down to the innermost uh, part of you, it's hard to get rid of that, and it's hard to get rid of attitudes and stories and details that you've heard. So it's really worth uh, putting a guard over what you're hearing and what you're willing to listen to. And it's also be very careful about your own sharing of um, information that not everybody needs to hear. Because the Bible talks about the unity, keeping the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And we want to be um, growing into becoming virtuous women, women, and that has a lot to do with our words. Okay, and if you have a question that you would like to hear biblical wisdom on, feel free to send a message to our Instagram account, or you can comment on one of the videos. We love getting ideas for future videos, and um, so we would love to consider a future topic. But thank you again for watching, and hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you again next time. So long. Bye.